Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Dan Kirkhoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Week 12 waiver wire targets for the 2024 fantasy football season. Now, I also want to welcome you to the Week 12 Bipocalypse. As we all know, there are six teams going on by this week. The Jets, Saints, Jaguars, Bengals, Bills, and Falcons. So besides the fact that we're not going to have those players, we're also dealing with injuries and, of course, inconsistency of play from our superstars. So over the course of today's episode, we're going to be talking about players that are hopefully not only going to fill in for Week 12 in order to help us capture a victory and get us one step closer to getting to the fantasy football playoffs, but hopefully provide players that are going to give us value for the remainder of the season in order to help us capture a 2024 fantasy football championship. So over the course of today's episode, I'm going to be talking about players at a variety of different positions, the best available running back, wide receiver, tight ends, quarterbacks, kickers, and defenses going into week 12. I'll give you guys my thought process and opinions, and of course, present statistics on each individual player. So if you guys are looking for my thoughts on a specific player, travel down to the description like we have in every single video. There are timestamps provided down there. While you guys are down there if you have not yet already be sure to subscribe to the channel and of course click the bell notification button because besides posting daily content i'm also live streaming every day on the channel after tonight's game between the houston texans and dallas cowboys i will be live here on the channel if you have any questions be sure to swing on by i'm more than happy to help in regards to your lineups going into week 12. now before we get into today's video a quick reminder at the end of today's video i will be putting together an underdog entry for tonight's game like we do every single monday night again for those of you who are trying to potentially tail that be sure to travel down to the description and check out underdog if you have not yet already if you sign up today using code andrew make that first time deposit minimum of ten dollars not only are you going to be able to claim the first time deposit offer tail tonight's picks but you'll also get my ranking sent to you for my email directly to yours every single sunday morning for the remainder of the season these are rankings by tier by position half ppr full ppr and includes flex so for those of you interested take advantage of that opportunity today link down in the description thank you very much okay so let's go ahead and begin talking about the running back position with trey benson of the arizona cardinals but before i do i want to go ahead and give you a quick reminder Typically, when I talk about players, it predominantly has to do with players that are rostered in less than 40% of leagues, whether it is on Sleeper and or on Yahoo Fantasy. Therefore, players like Javante Williams, Jalen Warren, Tank Bigsby, who could have potentially been dropped in your league last week, who are all rostered over 45% of leagues in both Sleeper and Yahoo formats, if they're available, you obviously address and pick them up first and foremost. But if, in fact, they are not available, then we move on to our number one. Trey Benson, who is currently only rostered in 20% of Yahoo leagues, 31% of sleeper leagues, someone we talked about last week, primarily because even though he was going on a bye week, he is one of the most, if not the most valuable handcuff going forward, because not only does he have individualized value, but he could have even more upside in the event in which James Conner was to miss any spectrum of time going forward. Now, in the last two games that we have seen Trey Benson play for the Arizona Cardinals, he has had himself 12.0 and 9.7 fantasy points in a half PPR scoring format, primarily because they are giving him a volume of opportunity. Nine touches in one game, 12 in the other. As long as they're giving it, giving him utilization on the ground and through the air, he has been an efficient runner over the course of this season, and he is playing about 30% of the offensive snaps over the course of the last two games. So if we're going to be in a position in which going forward, the Arizona Cardinals are going to continue to buzz saw through teams and continue to find success. When we look at their upcoming schedule, especially for the fantasy playoffs, taking on New England, Carolina, and the LA Rams, those are extremely advantageous matchups that can be one-sided affairs which could lead to Trey Benson being highly valuable in that spectrum of time even if James Conner is active there could be a lot of garbage time that goes in his direction even in the next three weeks prior to the fantasy football playoffs Seattle Minnesota and Seattle two of those three matchups again both against the division rival Seattle Seahawks are advantageous on the ground in terms of yardage allowed to opposing running backs therefore Trey Benson our number one RB pickup of the week moving on to our number two we have Roshan Johnson of the Chicago Bears. Now, we've talked about Roshan Johnson ad nauseum over the course of this entire season. Currently only rostered in 7% of Yahoo leagues, 13% of sleeper leagues. We all know what is going to happen, and we all know the entire gist of how the Bears provide value to jo Roshan Johnson on the goal line. He's been able to score himself a touchdown in four of the last seven games, primarily all of them on the goal line, because again, he is the goal line back amongst all Chicago Bears thus far this season. He is number one in terms of red zone rushing attempts and red zone rushing touchdowns inside the five-yard line, which again, as long as as he continues to score touchdowns in that overall capacity, he's going to be of value. But we have seen it like we did earlier this season. There are times in which he's going to completely disappear if, in fact, the Chicago Bears are not going to put themselves into situations in which a goal line opportunity is needed. And when we take into account the upcoming matchups for the Chicago Bears, they're not the greatest. So you are really going to be hyper dependent on Roshan Johnson finding the end zone. But amongst all the available running backs, still has value because he is given ample opportunity to at least find fantasy success. The next running back I wanted to mention is Jalen Wright. Yesterday, Raheem Mostert, one of the veteran running backs of this team, 
unfortunately had sustained an injury to his hip. Now, if we're going to be in a situation in which Raheem Mostert is going to continue to miss some semblance of time going forward or be limited in his overall capacity because of this injury, Jalen Wright will be the next man up. Now, even though we want to hope that there could be a two-headed monster approach for the Miami Dolphins, over the course of this entire season, as long as we have had a healthy Tua Tungavailoa, the entire offense revolves around Devon Achan. So going forward, even if... Jalen Wright is going to get himself more opportunity, a player that is currently only rostered in 6% of Yahoo Leagues, 15% of Sleeper Leagues, over the course of what, the last five games? In four of those games, he has been given five or more rushing attempts. So the opportunity has been given to him, but unfortunately has not been able to take advantage of said opportunity, only averaging 3.3 yards per carry throughout that span of time. So even if we're in a situation in which Raheem Mostert is going to miss some semblance of time, I truly do not believe that Jalen Wright's overall impact is going to be immediate. It would have to be on a huge run or he would have to be given opportunity near the goal line in order to find himself success considering again Devon Achan is absorbing all of the value of this backfield. Our number four is Amir Abdullah. Yesterday very similar to Jalen Wright and why his value has kind of increased over the course of the last 24 hours. Amir Abdullah had played himself a pretty wide variety of overall snaps in this most recent game and of course the week prior but this most recent game unfortunately Alexander Madison and Zamir White both went down with injuries. Therefore if we're going to be in a situation in which both those running backs are going to miss the upcoming matchups we would assume that Amir Abdullah the most veteran running back and the only other running back that was active on Sunday and has gotten himself a healthy volume of opportunity scored himself a receiving touchdown. If we're going to assume that Amir Abdullah is going to be the only running back in this offense going forward, of course, he would have himself a baseline of value to be a top 36 potential option going into the week, especially when we take into account his receiving upside, which really is his baseline floor of production. Moving on to Cam Akers, our number five. Look, Cam Akers is the handcuff to Aaron Jones, but as long as he continues to get touches, by himself, he's going to have individualized value. Each of the last two games, 10 plus attempts on the ground. Now, since joining the Minnesota Vikings, he's only averaging 3.76 yards per carry, so he hasn't been highly efficient. But as long as he's going to continue to be given this volume of touches, besides being a handcuff, he's going to have value in a week in which we have six teams on by. So for those of you who are in a super desperate situation, perhaps picking him up and getting yourself 10 touches out of him is not going to be a better overall opportunity, especially considering the matchup on hand this week is advantageous, especially considering he scored within the receiving game last week. There's always the possibility that he can find himself a garbage time touchdown within the upcoming performance. And the final running back I wanted to mention is Jerome Ford, mainly because there is a quick turnaround between Sunday's game against the Saints and, of course, the Cleveland Browns now having to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers on Thursday Night Football. Besides the fact that Jerome Ford outsnapped Nick Chubb by nearly twice as many snaps, he also had himself five rushing attempts and had four receptions on four targets. So nine total touches, not a bad overall week. But going into this upcoming game, considering the short week ahead, if Nick Chubb is going to be limited in his overall utilization because of the short week and the quick turnaround, we could see even more Jerome Ford within the upcoming matchup. In an offense that is throwing the ball 40 plus times per game, Jerome Ford is the primary receiving get back and can certainly have value in a PPR format to provide at least a little bit of upside for those of you who are in need of it, especially for those of us who are dealing with a bipocalypse that has all of our starting running backs out. All right, let's continue on with the wide receiver conversation. Let's talk about Elijah Moore wider receiver of the Cleveland Browns. Now, before I do so, again, another wide receiver that I wanted to mention in regards to the Cleveland Browns, if somehow, some way, Jerry Judy is still not rostered, I don't know how that could be possible, but if in fact he isn't, please pick him up. Guys like Roma Dunze, Quinton Johnston, Christian Watson, all of them rostered in over 45% of leagues. That is why they are not mentioned on today's episode. So if those guys are available, they should be addressed first. Now, in regards to Elijah Moore, if in fact all those players that I just previously mentioned are already taken, we talk about Elijah Moore who is currently only rostered in 8% of leagues on Yahoo, 19% on Sleeper. Now again, this is a player that we've talked about last week and the week prior, considering the volume of opportunity he was consistently getting with Jameis Winston under center. In the last three Jameis Winston starts, Elijah Moore has had 8, 9, and 12 targets in those individual games. The opportunity share continues to go in his direction, primarily because in each of the last three games in which Jameis Winston has started, his overall passing attempts have been 40 plus every single game. Therefore, if we're going to be in a situation going into the Thursday night matchup, in which Nick Chubb is not going to be utilized heavily. And we're going to see Jameis Winston continue to air it out 40 plus times, whether it is in garbage time or whether they're ahead, it does not matter. We're anticipating Elijah Moore, who is playing 70% of his offensive snaps from the slot position thus far this season, to get himself a healthy volume of opportunity. Primarily because over the course of the last two games, when Pittsburgh has taken on Baltimore and Washington, they have allowed nine catches for 70 and six catches for 103 to receiving options on both of those individual teams in week nine and 10. I anticipate to see a lot of receiving upside from guys like Elijah Moore and, of course, David Njoku within the upcoming Thursday night matchup that should be exciting. 
Our number two, we have Adam Thielen, another player that we've talked about over the course of the last couple of weeks, player that you wanted to have picked up prior to him coming off of the injured reserve. Obviously, they were on a bye week last week, and perhaps you potentially dropped him because you needed the roster space, if in fact you did. Again, currently only rostered in 19% of Yahoo leagues, 34% of sleeper leagues. We did hear earlier today from Dave Canales, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. He did confirm that we are going to get Adam Thielen playing this week. So if he expects him to play, and they've already come out and said that Bryce Young is going to be the starting quarterback once again, even though they do take on the Kansas City Chiefs, I would anticipate that Adam Thielen is going to be the most highly utilized receiving option within this offense outside of perhaps Jatavion Sanders. Now, the primary reason I feel so confident making that statement is because of what we saw last season. In 2023, from weeks 4 through 11, Adam Thielen was averaging 10.3 targets per game and 12.9 half PPR fantasy points per game with Bryce Young at quarterback. Double-digit targets per game could be within the realm of possibility, even though this is a completely different offense based on overall play calling and overall scheme. We're still going to continue to see the rapport between Bryce Young and Adam Thielen build, the veteran wide receiver that, again, is the best wide receiver option on this team in comparison to guys like Leggett and Coker. I do anticipate Adam Thielen to get himself a lot of opportunity, especially in an upcoming matchup in which they're going to have to throw the ball a lot in order to keep up with the Kansas City Chiefs offense. Number three, we have Demario Douglas. Look, in a full PPR scoring format, that is the only time that I would suggest picking up Demario Douglas. He is 100% dependent on getting himself receptions in order to find his value. Over the course of the last three games in a half PPR scoring format, only averaging 5.3 targets and 7.5 fantasy points per game. In a full PPR, he's either 9 to 10 fantasy points over the course of the last three weeks. This week, they take on the Miami Dolphins. Last time out against the Miami Dolphins, 9 targets, 6 catches for 59 receiving yards. Again, in a full PPR, nearly 12 fantasy points. In a half PPR, not as great of an overall potential start within the upcoming week, whether it is your wide receiver 3 or even a flex. But if you're in a desperate enough situation, he should be available in your league. The number 4 option, we have Jalen McMillan. The expectation is that going forward, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to buzzsaw through teams. They should go on a winning streak in which they are completely dominating henceforth. Considering how well they have played thus far this season as an offense and with the return of Mike Evans, it is only going to help the potential upside of Jalen McMillan. Even though Jalen McMillan is technically the number three, if not the number four receiving option of this team behind Mike Evans, K. Dotton, and Rashad White, going forward, as long as Mike Evans on the opposite side of the field is not only going to pull the number one cornerback, but also double coverage with safety help over the top, that is going to open up more opportunity for Jalen McMillan who over the course of the last two games in which he has played has seen seven and eight targets so as long as the opportunities are there they're going to potentially get him within the you know Chris Godwin role and if we can get him within that role and he can step up to the task on hand as they are completely dominating the upcoming matchups everyone should eat within this offense moving on to our number five we have Nick Westbrook Aikine the fact of the matter is Nick Westbrook continues to score touchdowns. He has scored a receiving touchdown in five of the last six games he has played since week six he has been the number 17 overall wide receiver in a half PPR for fantasy football. And he's been number 28 amongst all wide receivers in terms of fantasy points per game on average. He is currently only rostered in 4% of Yahoo leagues, 7% of sleeper leagues, and in the absence of DeAndre Hopkins has truly acted upon the opportunity at hand. He is continuing to ball out and is coming off of a game in which he had over 100 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown. As long as that is implicated... As long as there is a potential for him scoring a touchdown, for many of us desperate for a wide receiver play this week, not a bad one. Now going to our number six, we have Marquez Valdez-Scantling, a player that is on bye week in week 12, but I still wanted to mention him if in fact you are preparing for the remainder of the season. This could be a player that you rank as highly as number one because over the course of the last two weeks, he has had himself over... 80 receiving yards in both games and at least one receiving touchdown. Even though this most recent week it wasn't a deep yard reception, it was a reception 10 yards down the field that ended up turning into a 60 yard receiving touchdown where he made a majority of that overall play with his legs after the catch. Nonetheless, going forward, again, a player that is currently only rostered in 25% of Yahoo leagues, 36% of sleeper leagues, if in fact you are preparing for the future. In the absence of Rashid Shahid, again, he continues to find value within that Saints offense. All right, moving on to the final three players I wanted to mention before we continue on to the tight end and quarterback conversation. We have Alec Pierce, Darius Slayton, and Jalen Tolbert. Of course, with Anthony Richardson back and looking better than ever, Alec Pierce will continue to have value within that offense. Darius Slayton, as to whether his rapport with Tommy DeVito is going to continue considering Daniel Jones has now been benched, we're going to have to wait and see, but he should be coming off of not only the bye week, but the concussion protocol and should now be healthy. And then Jalen Tolbert, depending on what the overall situation with CeeDee Lamb is, you could potentially pick up Jalen Tolbert tonight and benefit from that for the remainder of the upcoming season. All right, let's move on to the tight end and quarterback conversations. I wanted to go ahead and first and foremost mention, if players 
somehow, some way, at the tight end position, like Hunter Henry, Johnny Smith, and Taysom Hill are not already rostered. All of them are rostered in over 45% of Yahoo and Sleeper Leagues. If they're not already rostered, please do yourself a favor and make sure they are. They should be the top priority. But if, in fact, they already are rostered, considering we've mentioned them on multiple occasions over the course of this entire season, let's go ahead and begin with our number one. Will Disley of the Los Angeles Chargers. Coming off of a week in which he was able to score himself a touchdown, had himself four receptions, 80 receiving yards, 16 fantasy points. Currently only rostered in 23% of Yahoo Leagues, 19% of Sleeper Leagues. For those of you who are dealing with a bipocalypse situation in which you need to pick up a tight end and immediately start them going into this week, Will Disley, again, is a fantastic option, especially when you look at their upcoming schedule. They take on Baltimore this week, the following week, Atlanta, Kansas City, then Tampa Bay. When we put into perspective the advantageous nature of those matchups, they are all top 12 in terms of fantasy points per game allowed to opposing tight ends. Baltimore 11th, Atlanta 9th, Kansas City 12th, and Tampa Bay 2nd. Will Disley going forward going to get himself a lot of utilization within this offense, especially when we take into account what he has done as of week 6 through 11. He's been able to get himself a 26% target rate within this offense. So one out of every four routes that he is running, he's being targeted on. He's gotten himself an average of 6.33 targets per game with an 80% catch rate. So even though his overall target opportunity isn't a great number if he's catching five out of every six receptions of course he is going to be very valuable for fantasy purposes going forward moving on to our number two we have Zach Ertz again continuing to ball out coming off a week in which he put up 15.7 fantasy points had himself a touchdown in garbage time and a two-point conversion as long as these opportunities are going to continue to persist as the number two receiving option of the Washington Commanders offense again from week six through 11 averaging 6.17 targets per game and nearly nine fantasy points per game and a half VPR certainly has himself upside of value going forward up until his bye week in week 14. Then we move on to Jatavion Sanders, someone that we've talked about over the course of the last couple weeks. Over the course of the last two games with Bryce Young, a quarterback, week 9 and 10, Seven targets, six receptions, 95 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown total, averaging about 9.25 fantasy points per game. But when we look at the spectrum of weeks 6 through 10, in games in which he has played 70-plus percent of the offensive snaps throughout that span of time, averaging five targets per game and 8.78 fantasy points per game in a half PPR scoring format. Again, three fantastic options at the tight end position for those of you who are in a bind or dealing with an injury. Then we move on to the quarterback conversation, which I want to first and foremost mention. If players like Bo Nix, Matthew Stafford, and Russell Wilson aren't already rostered, please make sure they are before you go ahead and address potentially picking up the following options. Number one, Anthony Richardson. Coming off a week in which he was 20 of 30 passing, a 67% passing completion percentage, 272 yards, one passing touchdown, 10 rushing attempts, 32 yards, and a two rushing touchdowns. Dilo yesterday in the live stream specifically came in and said, and I quote, Andrew, we have to start Anthony Richardson. And like I've told you guys in yesterday morning's live stream, whenever Dilo comes into the live stream with an hour remaining and makes a statement of that caliber, we all have to listen up because in the past, he has been highly accurate. It has been so highly accurate that I swear he has a little bit of a time traveler energy to him. It makes me feel like he knows the event before it's going to happen. But nonetheless, Anthony Richardson coming off of an incredible performance, currently rostered in over 40% of leagues. So again, if he is available, I will be surprised. But if in fact, somebody in your league has dropped him and you want to pick him up, you certainly can. Now, I will put into perspective Perspective. This upcoming week is not the greatest overall matchup taking on the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions haven't allowed more than one passing touchdown to a quarterback this season within an individual game, which again, understand that it is a difficult matchup to say the least, but also the Detroit Lions thus far this season, they have forced one interception every single game over the course of the entire year. This upcoming week, one of the primary underdog entries I'm going to make is higher on Anthony Richardson's overall interceptions thrown. Because again, the Detroit Lions have forced one interception every single game this entire season. Now, even though Anthony Richardson is going to find his majority of his value from his rushing upside, and of course, there have been many of quarterbacks that have found rushing upside against the Detroit Lions. Baker, 5 for 34 and a touchdown on the ground. Kyler, 5 for 45. Geno, 5 for 38. Sam Donald, 4 for 39. Rudolph, 4 for 29 and a touchdown. Even though the Detroit Lions cannot stop opposing rushing quarterbacks, Again, it's still going to be a very difficult matchup for Anthony Richardson this week. Moving on to our number two, we have Drake May, who again continues to play incredibly well. Coming off of a week in which he had himself a 75% passing completion percentage, 282, two passing touchdowns, 27 on the ground, 18 fantasy points. Over the course of weeks 6 through 11, in the five healthy games he has played, he is averaging 17.16 fantasy points per game and averaging nearly five rushing attempts and 40 rushing yards per game. So as long as we're going to be in that realm of possibility, this upcoming week taking on the Miami Dolphins, who have most recently allowed 282 passing yards and two touchdowns from Gardner Minshew, 235 and three touchdowns from Josh Allen, 307 and two touchdowns to Kyler Murray, and 293 passing yards to Matthew Stafford, you would assume that Drake may continue his streak of success 
this week. Then we move on to the final option. We have Jameis Winston coming off of another week in which he had 46 passing attempts, 395 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. Again, as long as he's going to continue to air it out at this capacity, he is going to continue to feast for fantasy and continue to help other prospects like David Njoku, Jerry Judy, Cedric Tillman, and Elijah Moore be fantasy relevant on Thursday night, even though they do take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm still firing him up if I need a quarterback that certainly has himself incredibly high upside. Regardless of whether he turns over the ball, he's going to continue to air it out on a consistent basis. All right, let's close out today's episode in regards to our kickers and defensive potential pickups. Again, every single week I mentioned Matt Gay because he somehow, someway is only rostered in 13% of Yahoo leagues and 7% of sleeper leagues. Over the course of weeks four through 11, he has had eight consecutive games of two or more field goals made. Not only that, he's been averaging 10 plus fantasy points per game over the course of that time. Their upcoming schedule, Detroit, New England, and the bye week, again, Relatively advantageous in my mind. Chase McLaughlin, our number two. Again, this is a kicker that we dropped earlier this year because of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense being a lesser option with the absence of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Now, prior to those two wide receivers getting injured, Chase McLaughlin was averaging 10.3 fantasy points per game. Post-injury, he's averaging 7.7 .7 fantasy points per game. Their upcoming schedule, Giants, Carolina, Las Vegas, Los Angeles Chargers, Dallas, Carolina. I would anticipate that Chase McLaughlin going forward, highly valuable. Then we move on to Austin Seibert. Now, I don't know if he's going to be healthy and playing this week, but I would assume that if someone in your league dropped him, you should be going out and picking him up, assuming he's going to play. From weeks two through nine, prior to Austin Seibert getting injured, he was averaging 13.25 fantasy points per game. He was more valuable than many of our RB2s on roster. Therefore, if in fact, somehow, some way he's going to play and he's available, do yourself a favor and pick him up for the remainder of the season. I understand he has a week 14 bye, but again, highly valuable. Now, staying on the topic of the Washington Commanders, we continue with their defense. Again, if defenses, for example, like the Broncos, Dolphins, Lions, Texans, and Chiefs are available, pick them up first and foremost. But when I looked at their overall roster ship percentages, they were relatively high in comparison to the three that I'm going to mention. So we'll begin with the Washington Commanders, who this upcoming week take on the Dallas Cowboys. We've most recently seen the Philadelphia Eagles score 20 points as a defense against Dallas. We don't know what Houston's going to do tonight, but again, that is to be determined. Obviously, this is being recorded before tonight's game. But again, Washington widely available. Pick them up. Then we move on to the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Team defenses against the Seattle Seahawks over the course of this entire season. From weeks 3 through 11, we have seen the following statistical performances. 7, 7, 18, 7, 0, 9, 22, 7. Fantasy points in those individual weeks. That's 9.6 fantasy points per game from defenses against the Seattle Seahawks offense. So as long as we're going to see that kind of level of potential, on top of the fact that the Arizona Cardinals, as a defense, have scored over 12 fantasy points in each of the last two weeks and have an incredibly advantageous upcoming schedule as they take on Seattle twice and their fantasy football schedule for the upcoming playoffs, New England and Carolina in weeks 15 and 16, you might want to go ahead and pick them now before it's too late. Then we move on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who again, this upcoming week, take on Tommy DeVito and the New York Giants. Again, defenses against the Giants as of late. 11, 8, 15, 15, 4, and 9. That's 10.3 fantasy points per game on average. Tommy DeVito, again, he's going to be relatively conservative, but if in fact the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are great at stopping the run, are going to force him to pass the ball, it could lead to many of turnovers that lead to fantasy upside. All right, with this all covered, let's go ahead and let's close out today's episode with putting together a couple entries in regards to tonight's game between the Houston Texans and, of course, Dallas Cowboys. Now, before I go ahead and put together the upcoming entries, again, for those of you who are wondering if you're eligible to sign up today using code Andrew via Underdog, check out the map to the right side of the screen to determine your eligibility. This eligibility will determine whether or not you can go ahead and take advantage of the overall pickums, put together those entries later tonight, and, of course, get my rankings every single Sunday morning. If you can't, you can always find the rankings via Patreon link down in the description. Now, let's go ahead and head on over and put together those entries right now. All right, so going into tonight's matchup, these are the following plays that I feel most comfortable with. So I'm going to mention two Houston Texans, and then I'm going to mention a player in an NBA game because primarily I don't know what to expect out of the Dallas Cowboys later tonight. So first and foremost, I want to talk about Joe Mixon. If you don't want to take advantage of the overall anytime touchdown play from him, which is a 0.79x multiplier, okay? If you don't want to take advantage of this, which he has accomplished in six of the last six healthy games he has played, whether it's on the ground or through the air, he has continued to find success in this category. If you wanted a higher multiplier, you could take advantage of 79 and a half rushing yards, which I think is very much so possible. It's a little bit of a higher overall multi as well. And he's been able to accomplish this in a total of 
five of the last six healthy games that he has played. But again, as of right now, I'm going with a touchdown, even though last week, Kyron Williams screwed me on that category. I'll probably put in an entry with both the rushing yards and the rushing touchdown just to be safe. But the other player I wanted to mention is Nico Collins, and I'm taking him higher than 59 and a half receiving yards. Nico Collins has been able to accomplish higher on this number in nine of the last nine games he has played with the Houston Texans, even going back to last season, the postseason, the regular season. He has consistently been a top tier option and one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League over the course of the last two years. Therefore, going forward, 60 receiving yards should be a cakewalk for him tonight. Now, on the other side of the football, when we talk about, you know, potentially the Dallas Cowboys, do I trust any of these potential options? I kind of want to wait and see what they're able to produce. As of right now, one of my favorite plays in terms of, well, actually it's an NBA play. One of my favorite plays for tonight that I wanted to go ahead and pair these players with was Dyson Daniels. He's a player that, again, for the Atlanta Hawks, has been able to take, what, 17 shots per game on average over the course of the last five games he has played. And going higher on his overall points scored, I mean, at 9.5, I think this is the automatic. This is what I'm going to put together. It's currently a 2.59x, $25 for nearly 65. That's the entry that I'm making first and foremost. So there may be more entries that I want to go ahead and potentially put forth, but perhaps you have something in mind in terms of the Dallas Cowboys that you, which you want to pair these players up with. But I'm going to take these three players as the automatic going into this week. I may go ahead and potentially travel back to the NFL play and put together that you know overall entry in regards to the rushing yards of Joe Mixon going higher than 79 and a half. Because again, this should be a cakewalk for him, especially considering the upcoming matchup. It's a top five matchup in terms of rushing statistics allowed. But not only that, of course, this offense has been heavily predicating their entire scheme on running the ball consistently. When we specifically look at Joe Mixon's rushing attempts over the course of the last four weeks, 25, 25, 24, 25. As long as he's going to get himself 20 plus rushing attempts within the upcoming game, averaging over four yards per carry, 80 rushing yards should be within the realm of possibility at a base minimum. This is a fantastic play. And that's going to cover for me today. Thank you everybody for watching. Until later tonight, I'll be back live streaming here on the channel. Thank you everybody for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.